let's consider an example on angular momentum. So we have a spinning disk. The mass of the disk is 100 kilograms. And um, it's spinning at an angular velocity of uh, 2 radians per second, which is not a lot of speed. And also, uh, it has a radius of 2 meters. Also, on the edge of the disk is a small child which is sitting. And this child weighs, has a mass of 20 kilograms. Um, so this is the set of initial setup. Now what happens, the child starts moving inside towards the center and after some time the child is somewhere here at a distance of one meter from the center and the disk is still spinning, it will keep spinning, assuming there is no friction. So the question is if omega i, which means the initial angular velocity is 2 radians per second, what is omega f? There are no external torques acting and there is no friction acting. So how to solve this? Well, we can certainly solve it by simply talking about the conservation of angular momentum. <coughs> what is the initial angular momentum? And we know that angular momentum is given as um, i times omega. What is i? Well, we know I is the moment of inertia, and we are interested about um, about moment of inertia about the the axis <coughs> about which the disk is rotating. So the axis about which disk is rotating is the center, and about the center, we know that disk has a uh, moment of inertia given as m r square divided by two, where m is the mass of the disk, r is the radius of the disk, and uh, also there will be moment of inertia contribution coming from the child. The child is also there. <coughs> How much is going to be the um, uh, moment of inertia because of the child? Well, it will be m. Let's label them differently. Let's call them md and mc. So this is md. It's going to be mc r squared. Right? Whenever you have a mass at a distance r, then I we know is given as m r squared. That is a definition of moment of inertia. Okay, and that gives us 100 times radius is 2, so it's given 4 over 2 plus 20 times 4. r squared is 4. And that gives us 280 kilograms meter square. That is the I. Okay, once we have the I, the, the movement of inertia, so this is I. All right, so what is the initial angular momentum? Well, the initial angular momentum is going to be 280 multiplied by 2, where omega is 2. And this should be same as the final angular momentum. So the final angular momentum will be IF, because you see movement of inertia has changed as the child has moved inside. So the geometry of the system has changed, and that's why moment of inertia has also changed. Multiplied by omega f. Now, similar to previous case, we can again calculate i f. That is the final moment of inertia. So because of the disk, nothing is going to change. It's still going to be 200 plus is going to be 20. Now, r is just 1. So it's going to be 20 times 1 squared. And that gives us 220 kilogram meters square. So that is nothing but 220 times omega f. So we get omega f equals 560 divided by 220. And that should be 28 over 11 radians per second. And you can see this is more than 2 radians per second. This is more than 2 radians per second. So the disk is going to s 
to inc this disc will increase its angular velocity to compensate for a reduced moment of inertia uh, to make sure that angular momentum stays constant similar to the case when you have when you when you stand on a spinning stool with two masses in your hands and if you stretch your arms initially and you're spinning and but if you retract your hands towards your chest you will observe that you will start spinning faster and this is what is happening here 